basketball's own Tasmanian Devils are now extinct and the fans are livid. On Friday night before a fiercely emotional sellout crowd, the men's team played and lost its last match. Along with Geelong and the Gold Coast, Hobart's fallen by the wayside as the NBL abandons financially troubled class. Power brokers in the, in the basketball, the big clubs, the five big clubs, want a competition of probably eight, eight members. They want a Super League and they don't want the small clubs involved in it. And we've just started to get it together and it's been ripped away from us. It's just like a hemorrhage, it really is. People on the mainland just don't realise what it's doing to the whole of Hobart. I'm just so emotionally distraught, we don't have anything else here. Time ran out for the Devils, defeated 79 to 101. The ovations lasted 20 minutes. It does uh, give a community a sense of spirit, but uh, that seems to have gone with the Devils. Mary Gearn reporting, still a couple of I can't say just how pleased I am that we've actually arrived at this, uh, this point. We began the conversation with Larry Kesselman. He had a vision to bring NBL to Tasmania. And as a government, we have long held the view that we need to be on the national stage, playing in national competitions. And the NBL is the competition that we are going to take our first step into. We went over and spoke to the fans, the business, the government. Uh, it was easy to tell how much passion there is for having this team and uh, delivering a, the jack jumpers became an obsession of ours and, uh, and giving them something that they can all get behind and support was a special moment for us. Three, two, one. Simon Brookhouse has landed the role of Chief Executive Officer. He'll start the job next month and play a key role in getting the team on the floor next year. It's exciting. You don't often get a chance to build something from scratch. Um, and particularly in such a great league as the NBL. I'm a, I'm a basketball fan, have been for a long time. Tassie was more of a basketball state than, than people might have thought. Basketball was, was fairly popular and entrenched in Tassie, which I guess made it a little bit more surprising as to why there was no representation uh, for Tasmania on the on the national stage. We obviously had the success of the Launceston Casino City team back in the early 1980s. They won the NBL Championship. Uh, the WNBL Championship was won by the Tassie Islanders in the early 90s. The Devils were up in flying in the 80s and 90s. But over the last five to six years, kids have been all, all over the NBA watching our Australian players over in the United States have been getting around the NBL. And now to have the Jack Jumpers here and something for our young people to strive for, it's back in a big, big way. The NBL and those sort of behind it were adamant that it had to be called Tasmania. It had to represent the whole state because there is a history of parochialism in Tasmania where it's north versus south. We are one state, we are one team, we are all of Tasmania. And I think that's why this has worked so well because it embraced the whole state. The amount of times that Tasmanian sporting public's been knocked back by national sporting organisations. Like knock back after knock back after knock back and then the NBL will come along and almost give the Tasmanian sporting public a, a big hug and Tasmanians just want to feel loved. It is a world-class event stadium. It ensures that we have a facility as good as anywhere in the country. You know, it's been over a year we've been working on this, bringing 15 guys together and the coaching staff. Everyone will be a bit nervous, but I, I, I really think that once the ball goes up, we'll, we'll relax a bit and enjoy the night. The Tasmania Jack Jumpers have announced their third and last import, Canadian Mikhail McIntosh, who will join Americans Josh Adams and Josh Majette. I want to be careful. I heard they have drop bears in there. Bro, I, don't, I still have no idea what those are. Are those actual no, bears? Like no big grizzly bears that just drop from the trees and just... The claws. <laughs> and, <laughs> it's crazy. My name is Josh Adams. I am from Parker, Colorado. My name is Josh Majet. I'm from Birmingham, Alabama. I'm Mikhail McIntosh. I'm from Pickering, Ontario, Canada. My first impressions of Tasmania is, is actually really amazing. People remind me a lot of uh, Canadians, how nice they are and kind and just welcoming. 
It's a bit cold, colder than I thought. That's one, that's one order of Uber Eats. We've been thrilled with, with the city and with all of Tasmania. It's just a beautiful place and can't wait to explore it more. My relationship and uh, friendship with some of these guys, especially, you know, Mikhail and, and Josh, two great guys. We wouldn't want to have any other imports on this team with me. We're a homie, though. Homie not a man. Look at you. He's a lone wolf, too. He's just chilling, man. Lazy day. I've dropped their egos at the door. We've all been in situations where maybe the basketball wasn't as fun, so I think we're all here trying to enjoy ourselves and, you know, find that love for the game again. It's a very interesting situation to be a part of the inaugural season of any team, and I think that's uh, another reason why it's so invested, just to make everybody proud. Jack Jumpers coach Scott Roth took the team for its first training session today for season 22. Coach Roth declaring they are championship contenders, but the betting markets have the Jack Jumpers favourite to finish last. Any other thoughts, questions? Good? Let's bring it in. All right, let's have a hell of a day today. Let's get after each other. Let's be pros. You got a mags? Ants. Good, JP. Good, Wix A. Mine, 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 Sam. Good, Ken A. One more, White. I want to win a championship, and from day one, that's going to be our goal. Uh, that's what we're shooting for, and that's what we're going to build towards. Uh, in professional sports, if you're not in to do that, I don't, I don't know why you're actually coaching or being involved in it. And I remember Scott mentioning the word championship. We can win the championship this year, and everybody's like, well, let's just <laughs> cool the jets a, a little bit and maybe focus on winning a couple of games first before we start talking playoffs and championships. Work on your defense, close, square. We're not here to just make up some numbers and go through the process. I think just to be happy to be in the league is, is not professional sports, in my opinion. If you're playing professional sports, you're playing to win. Too easy, Sean. Coach wants to win a championship in the first year. But, uh, the reality of that is that's not that easy. This is a really even competition, and this year more than ever. You know, why not us? We got nothing to lose, and we got everything ahead of us. We got a lot of talented guys and, and a lot of passion, a lot of energy. High level IQ guys, high character guys. Uh, we got toughness. So we've got a lot of the right ingredients, I think, for a, a championship team. We're preparing as if we want to be playing game five of a grand final series. You're just taking yourself out of the play. We need to be rolling middle to get the offensive rebounds. I want these guys to compete at the highest level. I want to win a championship this coming year. I want to have that kind of pressure on us to do well. I think it's a group of guys who have a lot to prove also. Guys who kind of have a chip on their shoulder and here to prove something and kind of make some noise. You know we're the new guys in the league. We're not going to back down from anyone and we're going to go out there with something to prove. Welcome to round one, game one of season 2022. In one of the most anticipated opening round games in NBL history, today we welcome the Tasmania Jack Jumpers to the NBL. Walking into My State Bank Arena was just unbelievable, uh, full of emotion. I had a tear in my eye watching these guys run out for their very first game. We've been waiting 25 years. Tasmanian sporting history was being made. A return to the National Basketball League, brand new stadium. There was this real electricity in the air. No turnovers, ball movement, patience. Let that thing live. Hey, enjoy the moment. All right, you guys earned it. Together, one, two, three, together. For the first time since 1996, basketball is back in Tasmania. Dumps out to McDaniel, one of their first signings. It makes sense that he scores the first points for the Jack Jumpers. Get on it! The sold out by State Bank Arena comes alive as Josh Majette finishes the quarter with a bang. God, damn, we gotta get the ball. We gotta find your guys in transition in the offensive glass. We gotta rebound. We batted a few balls around. They got a dagger on us. And we're not matched in transition. We gotta get them square. McVeigh, offensive rebound, and puts it back in. 
This was a great effort by the Brisbane Bullets. To hold the Jack Jumpers to 14 after they gave up 27 was a good turnaround. You guys can go. Oh, my. That is tough. That is tough. I'm tired of this. My bad. My bad, coach. That doesn't happen now in the fourth quarter. Move the ball. Franks tees one up. Less than 90 seconds to play. It was stripped of it by Majed. 8.1 seconds on the clock now for Brisbane. Sobey for three. Got oh, it! Word. Nathan Sobey with ice running through his veins. 5.9 seconds to play with. Winds it down. Might still get a chance to get it away. He did. Good defensive stop. Uh, overtime begins on opening night. It is what it is. Keep going. We've got a lot of time, a lot of energy here. Then. Don't let these people down. You're playing great. We're going on and on and on. Together, man. Together. One, two, three, together. And we've got five extra minutes to find ourselves a winner. trying to build something here special. Uh, it's taken a lot of hard work, and the fan base is the number one thing that we have to continue to build from the north to the south. That's been one of the missions since I've been here from day one. Yeah, you know, our, our motto's been to defend the island, and tonight was the first night that we officially defended the island, so I'm really proud of them. The people here deserve and I think expect a fighting team. It's on our board every single day. Seeing the Jack Jumpers win their first game absolutely was a fairy tale. Watching the crowd and how special that was for them to get that outcome on that day, the underdog, I think all of a sudden the belief was there from the crowd, from the team, uh, and we knew we created something special for Tasmania. You talk about defend the island, which is the slogan that the team has sort of adopted, that gritty, defensive, never say die, punch above your weight, underdog type mentality that the team adopted. It's so Tasmanian, and I think the Tasmanian public really resonated with that, and they, they felt like these guys are actually, they might as well be born and bred Tasmanians. It's been good. I feel like I think the community thing's pretty big. How many times we've been out, you know, me and Jack were at Bunnings the other day and people talking to us, asking us about the Jack Jumpers. And... Uh, when we went up northwest, uh, Tassie, and we spent a week up there, it was really cool. Like, we got to see the history of it, how much they loved it up there. And like, a lot of people are really excited. So basketball is going to have a strong spot, a strong foothold. Last month, for me, I think every single time I've left the house, someone said something. Oh, I said, oh, are you the, maybe that new basketball team to can we get a photo in, shop, in the shopping centre? And it's changed very quick. Just the, the big fella the being sent on for one. We counted over about 100 <laughs> photos taken of him that night. The big fella's pretty popular. We held clinics early on, and this kid's running around in other teams' NBL jerseys. You do a clinic now, and there's Jack Jumper jerseys everywhere. Kids are looking at us now like, yeah, this is our team we're going to follow and, and, and ride it out. We still got a whole state we can get involved in this, so there's so much room for this club to grow. It's going to be a close one, flip a coin. And away we go. Humphrey 
Avery slips to the ring. Nice pass. Oh. Three continues, and that lead is six. We're just settling. We're not letting them guard us. Hey, we're playing low. Pace is horrendous. Very bad pass. Ten turnovers themselves tonight. Tasmania is due for my. Too easy in the end. Just rolls on. A shot and a chance to force overtime for Jen. Oh, oh. John, it's off, and the 36ers win their first game of the year. That's where? It's an easy bucket. Don't step up on him. to 83, the final result. Yeah, um, they got destroyed, to be honest with you. Eighth in the competition, Tasmania, for points per game. It's not going to be enough to win games. No 50-50 ball. We're standing flat-footed. They're jumping. We're watching. Get together. Or you're coming back now and again. Tasmania. Managed to win in their first game. Have not troubled the scorer since. Gunned by Xavier Cooks. Blocked! Oh! Game, set, match. After one of the most emotional wins you will ever see in their opening round, the Jack Jumpers have lost four in a row and are in real trouble. Scott holds people accountable, hard-nosed on the floor. But uh, that's what we love. Like, he sets his standards. Scott's someone I would go to war for. And that's all you want in a head, co head coach. You're not going to be a jerk and play for Scott Roth. Like, you got to be a good guy. you got to be culture. You've got to play the right way. We're going to win or lose the right way. And, you know, he's established that from day one. When I was 16, growing up just outside of Cleveland, Ohio, I had my first job ever. And I painted every fire hydrant in the city that year, and that's the last time I've ever worked. And then the next check I ever got was because of basketball. And so the orange ball is taking me around the world. It's giving me, you know, everything I have, a house, a family, my wife and my daughter. And it's been an amazing journey uh, because I fell in love with something. Good snap drill, guards up top, all the guards up top. Force flies on the elbows. I'm there to make them better. And again, I've asked a lot from them to get out of their comfort zones and to stretch and to do things maybe they haven't done in the past. And I need to be there to support them and, and hug them and, and yeah, kick them in the rear when they're not doing it. And I'm all in with them. So don't do something uh, completely crazy and then set yourself back yeah. three more days? Yeah. Because you're getting me worried. Yeah. Why? Well, you, you ever see the movie um, <laughs> The World According to Garp? And there's an airplane stuck in this house. There's a for sale sign on it. Yeah. And Robin Williams goes, what's the chances of that happening twice? I want that house. So I don't need you to keep crashing on me. They know I'm invested in them. They know I care about them. And I'd do anything for them. He's sacrificed a whole lot in terms of family. Going through that COVID period and having his family in the US and trying to get them out here to join him, I guess, starting out this journey and, and not being able to have them here. And, it was tough on him. Our last game in the Blitz against Cairns and Launceston, I, I drove out of there ready to go home and retire and just be done with this and, and get on a plane and go home. And I had a two and a half hour drive back to Hobart by myself. And I'd had enough. I was emotionally crashing and struggling in a lot of ways and probably not great to be around. And I never got home because of COVID. And I hadn't seen my wife in 14 months and my daughter in 18 months. And, um, and I had missed so many opportunities with them that I didn't know if it was really worth it anymore. And uh, that drive home, I was definitely going home. I've spent, you know, probably all but 10 months away from home in the past six years. So I know how that is. I've never gone two entire years without my family, like uh, Coach Roth did, or in itself is incredibly impressive. And the fact that he was able to come to work every day in a professional manner uh, just speaks all the more to him. Uh, we're just going to keep working. That's the only thing I know how to do is go back to work. Simon and them kind of knew that I was on that mode. And, 
to call me that day or the next day and basically said, hey, if you can just last a few more weeks here, I think the borders are going to open up by Christmas and we'll get your wife here as soon as we can. And can you just hang in there? Sure enough, a few days later, uh, they announced that the borders were going to open and that they were going to be able to get in here. I love what I do, but I also, obviously, everything I do is for my wife and daughter. You could just see the difference when they actually got here in, in December, and in him personally, he was much more relaxed uh, and a lot happier and more content. Here's Majed started his corner hot. Continues it! And the Jack Jumpers have the lead! Scott Roth is a, is a special creature. He's, uh, he's super passionate, he's all heart. What a pass! That'll count! It's pretty interesting to see a coach from North America get the people of Tasmania behind him so quickly. We can see how invested he is, how much it means to him. You know, my passion is how I feel at the moment and, and the excitement I feel and where I'm at in my life. You are you. He's pointing at the crowd, you, you, you. We're all in this together and I think that's what Tasmanians love. He is one of us now. The little mullet was flying around looking spectacular, so uh, it was awesome, you know, it's his passion. Ultimately, when I took this job, I said I wanted to be myself. I'm a passionate guy that, you know, loves his job, and I wanted to be successful or fail by doing what I thought was correct and not what other people expected. Great to have your company wherever you're watching. And the Tasmania Jack Jumpers, what an addition they've been. They're sixth on the ladder right now, 1-6, lost seven. Critical battle in the race for the finals. Oh, crazy good. Crazy good win for the Jack Jumpers. And McVeigh. They're just hanging around the finals conversation, Tasmania. Great hustle by the Jack Jumpers. Hopping, having this vision. Uh, Hopping, having this vision. Oh, Breaking out of these walls. Uh, out of they the come vision. up with it. Tasmania Jack Jumpers head into round 21 tomorrow and their final game of the home and away season. A win will move them into the four and on the cusp Good. of clinching a finals berth. Good, you two. Got a lot of clock. Good. Good chest blast. One more, please. Heading into this last round, I'm not sure I could have even scripted it better if I, if I wrote it down myself or imagined it. I am still a little bit surprised that the team is, is on the verge of playoffs. I didn't think they'd be this close. To be playing finals basketball, that'd be absolutely massive for this state. It's been a hell of a journey. So let's uh, see what happens here. Tonight, irregardless, we're coming in there to do what we started off to do and the win and uh, represent the state just play as hard as we possibly can and finish what you guys started. So uh, proud of you guys. Let's keep uh, our hopes alive here this evening, see what happens. Here, regardless, we got a hell of an opportunity uh, tomorrow in a full house for our last game uh, to represent the state one more time. All right, good job this morning. Together. Good evening and welcome to My State Bank Arena. If the Jack Jumpers win tonight and Perth lose on Sunday, the Jack Jumpers will be in the finals in their inaugural season. Oh. No, nothing in the world's gonna save your soul, you know. Uh, we set out to prove the world wrong or prove all the Tasmania or all of Australia wrong that, that we can make it. And we're right there. We're right where we asked to be at the beginning of the season to be playing Melbourne for all the marbles. And we're definitely proud of what we're done, but we're not finished yet. Jack Jumpers on a big night for basketball in Tasmania. What a start! Three of three from long range. They've blown Melbourne apart. It's a double-figure lead. Weeks helps.
keeps himself. Great push. Nobody stops the ball. We got to get back in transition alone. You can't run on his hip. You got to sprint ahead of him. And we got to get back to some discipline. Chris LeVac puts right down the top. Koala Chul from close range makes it look easy. What a play from Tasmania as they retake the lead. Start talking about O Wards and then you just let him walk in on that one with no contact. Can't happen. Hustles inside, can't finish more completely. Jack Jump is looking to keep the finals dream alive. Here's Majin from deep on the floor. Fills it up. Tassie are oh, going right here at the moment. They've scored 10 unanswered points. Steindl, he can throw it down. The finals beckon for the Tassie Jack Jumpers. Oh, it's a basketball party. Let's finish this professionally, all right? Smartly, professionally. We might play them again. Tasmania Jack Jumpers have thrashed Melbourne United by 22 points. They've done everything they could do up until this point. Control the controllables. Season the moment. The dream is still alive. And 24 hours from the finals being decided, Tasmania are in the four. All eyes will now turn to Sunday to see if Perth win and crush the Jack Jumpers dream. Yeah, it's been, a, it's been an unbelievable season. You know, I look at these guys, I get very emotional seeing these guys and, and the time they spent together. And to be 17-11 when this season's over, beat the defending champions on our own floor. And we'll see what the basketball gods got in store for us tomorrow. Uh, from day one, we wanted to defend the island and make Tasmanians proud. This is your team. It's been an amazing ride. I hope I see you next week. Thank you. He is a star. It's a special group of not just next stars, but you know, young Australians coming through the NBL. See what the 18-year-old can do here. That's what he can do. He was a boutique agent when we signed. He's just taking over the basketball world. Look, it's been a disappointing season for Mo, which is evident in the lack of minutes that he's getting. He didn't play Mo one game, or he didn't play as many minutes. Call me.